All right, people, we got a little welding job to do today. See what they're already put one bead across it, okay? And up here, the top. All right, and we're gonna put a couple more passes on TIG welding is, okay? For those people that don't know what TIG welding is, all right, this is called the TIG torch. All right, we're gonna be walking the cup on this pipe joint. Walking the cup is this right here, okay? You have it like that, and you don't just wiggle back and forth like this, okay? Walking the cup is where you got to actually walk it like this, okay? Just, just in your mind's eye, picture you, you know, picture you walking like a 55 gallon drum across the floor, okay? Just like this, very, very slow, with some, you know, some steady pressure, not too hard, because when this, when the ceramic cup right here eats up, you could crack it, okay? And then with your other hand, you add filler wire, okay? This is ER70S2 filler wire. This is the machine I'm using. Precision TIG, Lincoln, of course. Always like Lincoln. Miller's good. Hobart's also good. We're gonna crank this up. So this is thick metal. We're gonna crank this up to, uh, let's try 160 amps. Okay, post flow. This is frequency, that's for aluminum. This is AC and DC, okay? Steel, you will, DC negative. Aluminum, you will, AC, okay? Reverse, uh, reverse polarity is DC positive. All right, this is post flow. This is like to feed you TIG one, you gotta have gas, okay? This is your foot pedal to initiate the arc. There's gas coming out of it right now, okay? Ground wire, all right? This wire is just gonna be a flat position, and in a minute we're gonna do up like this, okay? But you'll see it in a minute. All right, that was that one pass you just seen. That was overlaying this right here, okay? Then we're gonna, then the next pass, we'll go all the way around it like this, and then the next pass, we'll go wider, okay? And I, I use the lay wire technique. You could dip, you know, but pipe welding, I just, you know, if I'm walking a cup like that, I just lay the, lay the wire in the puddle and just walk right over it, okay? Now we're gonna do up like this. Okay, I could easily flip it over and do it, but I, I want a challenge, so I'm gonna do it like this, okay? Up. All right, I'm gonna glove on. Always wear gloves. You don't have to have a suit on like this. I was just working in grease today, so that's why I have one. Anyway. There we go. Might take a couple dry runs, usually. go Bubba. See that discoloration? That's what you want. Yes sir. Hey if I, anybody wants to learn any welding tips and tricks I advise you to go to YouTube and, and type in uh, weldingtipsandtricks.com and of course you're not going to become a better welder unless you actually do it. You know what I mean? Let's cut right down a little bit. Let's let that metal cool off a little bit. Because when you're welding steel you can't just run beat after beat after beat after beat. You gotta let it cool. That's really with any metal. But let's go down to about 1.30. But yeah, WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. That guy also, his name is Jody. He also has a store called WeldMonger.com. If you want to purchase some products from him, man, for real. That's where I get all my stuff. That's where I got the machine. But 
Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, see, this, this camera here is a lot better. There you go. There it is. And we're going to do the same thing at the top. Okay. So, of course, this is a flat position, but you know, that's easy. But TIG welding is it's so much easier than like stick welding with, with like controlling the puddle and stuff like that. But anyway, that's just a rod still stuck in it. I'm going to have to go back around, let this start cool, get about 30 minutes, let it cool. And uh, yeah, check out weldmonger.com if you want to get some products. Any kind of, he sells all kind of torches, all kind of stuff. This is just an air cooled torch. They got water cooled torches, you know. I don't really need a water cooled torch because I'm not just constantly welding all the time. You know what I mean? But anyway, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, remember to take care of your bills, take care of your families, take care of your RCs. <laughs> Definitely. But anyway, oh yeah, I was thinking about maybe uh, maybe uh, starting to uh, make and fabricate uh, one fifth scale RC exhaust pipes. That'd be badass, wouldn't it? Hell yeah. Anyway, peace out. Oh yeah, and again, uh, when you're TIG welding or MIG welding, MIG welding you use a 75-20 mix, 75-25 mix of argon and CO2. When I when I TIG weld, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, when I TIG weld, I just use straight. Well, like really, really thick shit, especially like if you're wanting aluminum and it's really, really thick, you can put some use uh, argon and you can put helium in it too. You can have like have a uh, two, uh, you know, two compressed bottles and have one full of helium, one full of argon, and it just burns hotter. You get deeper penetration with a uh, helium because of course it burns a lot hotter. You're only going to get so much penetration on TIG welding. That's why usually it's good to put a chamfer or like put a bevel or something or something. That's what I did to this, but. Anyway, yeah, remember, a pretty wheel does not always mean it's a good wheel, okay? But anyway, just takes practice. Practice, practice, practice all the time, all right? I'm out, peace. Yeah, when you're TIG welding, you want everything to be super clean, okay? Super duper clean. I usually take an acetone wipe, or if I don't have any acetone, I take some handy dandy brake cleaner and wipe my, uh, my filler rods down. I wipe down my tungstens. This is the part that goes in the torch. Okay, this one's all messed up. I fell on the floor earlier, but I don't know who's using that one. It's messed up, but anyway, we can grind that back down and fix it. I want everything to be super, super clean, okay? Very clean, as clean as you can get it. All right, stick welding, not really so much. You don't have to, or, or MIG welding. But I'll, still, when I'm stick welding or MIG welding, I still like to make my shit as clean as I can, okay? But TIG welding, remember, clean, shiny metal. All right, all right. All right, people, there's a couple different types of TIG welding, okay? There's scratch start, where, like, that's most, most like, when you go take pipe welding tests, that's what most of them use. You just scratch, you just, you know, lay it down. This is lift arc. You just lay it down, and as soon as you come back up and it comes off, boom, it initiates the arc, okay? Or there's scratch start, like that. Or there's high frequency start, like what I got with a foot pedal, okay? So that's what you do. You put it, I ain't gonna do it right now because I don't have a, my hood on, but what you do is you know you put it close to wherever you want to weld just like that okay put it close just like that all right and then you get the foot pedal okay gas starts coming out you hear it see the gas coming out all right that's cool huh anyway you want to see something cool watch this unconnect the ground wire you want to see a lightning bolt watch this shit Huh? That's not welding, that's just a lightning bolt. Look at it. That's high freak start, okay? I got the foot pedal down. Now if I do this in the ground wire, I get blocked. That's cool, huh? That's pretty cool. Alright. Alright. See the ground wire was disconnected. So if you hook the ground wire up, like so, ground wire is hooked up to the device, okay? And if I do this right here and I hit this foot pedal i'll be blinded right now okay and it'll probably destroy my camera lens because it's so damn bright but i'm not gonna do that okay but anyway lift arc lift up initiates the arc okay scratch start scratch the tungsten or high freak start with a foot pedal okay i like to use foot pedal not all applications you can use that if you go take a test they might have scratch start they might have lift arc more commonly is a scratch start it's like scratch it like that and it starts to arc okay but the thing is, when you're pipe welding, 
uh, and you're using scratch start, you got to kind of whip out the putter real quick to, to you know, to, you know, de-initiate the arc. You gotta whip it out and you lose gas coverage momentarily. And what the gas does is it protects the weld from the oxygen, okay? Because if you get oxygen inside of a weld, it'll have porosity and it won't be, it'll be weak.